Hi there, this video is about the spatial patterns of fertility and mortality rates. And the whole um, sort of goal of this lesson is to identify the pattern of fertility and mortality rates around the world. And then we're just going to focus on Australia. So what we're looking at is being able to explain, explain the world's uh, trends and then the effects on Australia. Um, just linking this back to the syllabus, we're looking at the second dot points about learning about spatial patterns, fertility and mortality. So um, I've already said in my previous video that population is a lot to do with terminology. So what I want you to do is just to quickly um, pause the video, answer these questions, um, even your book or on the Google Forms that I'll send out with this video and then um, I'll go through those answers in class or in, um, in, um, in the Google Forms. All right. So let's look at the effects of birth rates and death rates. Um, what, what impact does that have on a, on a country's population? Well, BR there is birth rate and DR is death rate. Birth and death rates can seriously affect a country's population structure. Um, developing countries have high birth rates and low death rates, and this is all in general. Developed countries have low birth rates and low death rates. The, demo the demographic transition model, or the DTM, explains how countries have changed through history. The DTM has five st stages which each country will transition from. Now, there are very, very broad sort of you know um, trends there, and these all affect are affected by fertility and mortality rates. So fertility rates are the number of babies per thousand women um, that are born in a country and then mortality rate is the number of deaths per thousand per year in a certain country. So obviously fertility rates affect birth rates and mortality rates affect death rates. And there's a sort of um, a transition of how countries, um, you know, sort of, go through and that's heavily reliant on development as well. Um, so this is what the demographic transition model, and you can see those dashed um, vertical lines and there's sort of the different stages. You can see stage um, one here and I'll just get the highlighter out here. This is stage one in the yellow and um, you can see that population sort of is the same there's some ups and downs but we can see that here birth rates and death rates are high so when population goes up birth rates go up death rates go down when um, death rates go down birth rates go down and population decreases slightly so this is what happened throughout pretty much most of human history up to about the 1800s and then we start seeing the death rate fall and I'll get my red um, highlighter out here so this is stage two and we can start seeing that death rate here is decreasing why is this well it's mainly due to technology and scientific knowledge we started uh, you know sort of using better medicine better hygiene in hospitals and as a result that kept a lot of people from not dying the birth rate is still very high we don't see a drop in that birth rate until stage three and as you can see that's stage three so um, we'll start seeing um, birth rates decreasing as well as um, death rates and as a result the population in red drastically goes up so that's stage three stage four is what we're we've seen we've seen basically death rates and birth rates sort of hit general they're the same pattern and as a result, population start is starting to stagnate. So this stage four is where developed countries are. Stage three is where developing countries are. Now remember, population takes time, um, you know, for it to decrease. So countries in Asia, they've already got low birth rates, low death rates. They're pretty much in stage five, but it's going to take time. Um, for their children, obviously, um, you know, sort of to have le less fewer children. So that's why the population is still high. And we're going to start seeing that peter off in 2100. Um, so 
that's what the demo demographic transition model and when we talk about patterns of fertility and mortality we are seeing the highest patterns of um, mortal, um, um, fertility in parts of Africa and we are seeing um, obviously mortality rates become similar to birth rates so birth rates death rates same as mortality rates um, are petering out and as a result what we're seeing for the first time is this stage five here and we're seeing death rates higher than birth rates and as a result population is going to decrease um, so that that's what's happening particularly in countries like Italy and Japan we are seeing an older population um, we're seeing fertility rates decrease mortality rates increasing in these developed countries and a lot to do with that is the role of women technology um, those types of aspects of life um, so Australia where Australia would sit I'd say it's in stage five at the moment um, the only reason population is going up is because of international migration um, but again this is very general term so that's a de demographic transmission model and that's how it fits into mortality and fertility rates and I sort of highlighted um, where Australia's point it places in the DTM um, I've just explained uh, where it fits in so stage five why is that well because you know we're a developed country on a whole we're having fewer children family sizes are decreasing in the future that's certainly going to decrease even more and we're probably going to see some uh, more international migration particularly to help uh, younger generations so migration for labor really is going to be the reason why people come to Australia for good and we're probably going to see younger migrants aged between 25 and 35 because they can be skilled and fit into jobs where we need um, them to be and um, that will help and reduce issues like an aging population which happens in Japan and Italy at the moment so that's potentially what could happen um, there's a more in-depth explanation if you need any more information birth rates death rates and then talk about natural population change as well um, then uh, this is the um, how do countries population structure change over time remember these are um, population pyramids and they are very important we've got males and females of a country and then the numbers um, what I want you to do now as a quick little task I just want you to sort the four population pyramids into the correct order of the demographic demographic transition model so what pyramid should go first what's stage two what's stage three what's stage four so I'm just going to quickly ask you to pause go and do that you can number these um, one two three and four and we'll go through the answer in a second okay hopefully you've got the answer to that these are how um, population uh, structure changes over time and what it affect like what it looks like um, obviously this is stage one we've got obviously high birth rates low death rates remember th this is age all right so we haven't got that many people living above there this is stage two so you can see a, a really wide base where birth rates are increasing and death rates are you know decreasing as well and that's why that population is in, increasing we can if we look from the width of the the pyramids we can definitely see that there's that middle section is bigger and therefore the population is bigger this is stage three and we can start seeing that you know birth rates are starting to get a little bit smaller is a little bit smaller than this stage two and then what was the more people are living there's definitely more people than in stage three and then what we can see now is that birth rates really for it falling here in stage four so hopefully that's given you a bit of a an outline of the population characteristics uh, we've talked about fertility mortality rates and how they change over time and the world um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you in um, class the um, Gapminder video um, about um, fertility rates, mortality rates, and maps from uh, um, another website, GeoBlogger. So, yeah, I hope that um, explains to you everything that we've done. Um, and uh, obviously, big shout out to my year 11s. All right, thanks. Bye.